The International Slurry Surfacing Association's Technical Bulletin 100, commonly known as ISSA TB100, refers to the wet track abrasion test for slurry surfacing systems in which it measures the wearing qualities of the slurry surfacing system under wet abrasion conditions. The significance of the wet track abrasion test is that it establishes the minimum emulsion content of a given slurry surfacing system and can determine the long-term moisture susceptibility by use of a six-day soak procedure. In order to conduct this test, you will need a balance capable of weighing 5,000 grams to within a tenth of a gram, a Hobart Planetary Type Mechanical Mixer models C100, A120, N50 or modified N50 equipped with a 2.27 kilogram abrasion head. You will also need a quick clamp mounting plate, a flat bottom metal pan, a plastic bowl, a suitable mixing spoon or spatula, 30 pound roofing felt paper, a specimen mold, a mold strike off apparatus, a forced draft oven controlled at 60 degrees Celsius plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius, a constant temperature water bath controlled at 25 degrees Celsius plus or minus 1 degree Celsius, a 5 inch long rubber hose made out of 80 degree shore A hardness reinforced with a double cord surface, a prop block or device to support the pan and mounting plate assembly, and a number for sieve. Make sure your equipment conforms to the requirements in Section 5 of TB100 specification. In preparation of the test specimen, the proper ratio of system components based on dry aggregate weight should be determined in the laboratory according to another ISSA specification, TB113. Split or quarter according to ASTM C702, a sufficient amount of aggregate passing a number 4 sieve to obtain at least 800 grams. This should be 700 grams when using a Hobart N50 machine. Weight 800 grams of aggregate based on dry aggregate weight into the mixing bowl. Using the spoon, dry mix the mineral filler into the aggregate until uniformly distributed. Then add water and mix until all the components are uniformly wet. Next, add the emulsion and mix until the components are adequately coated and homogeneous. Do not mix longer than 3 minutes before casting. Quick set systems should only be mixed for 30 seconds and immediately cast. Center the opening in the specimen mold on the roofing felt paper. Pour the mixture in the upper section of the mold opening. Starting at the top of the opening and working toward the bottom, move the mold strike off apparatus in a back and forth motion completely filling the mold and leveling the mix with the lip. This process should be performed in a single pass and take no more than 15 seconds. A flat specimen surface of uniform texture is necessary to achieve accurate results. Remove the mold and place the specimen in a 60 degree Celsius oven within 3 hours of casting and dry to constant weight. The specimen should be dried for a minimum of 15 hours and no longer than 24 hours. Once the specimen has dried for the specific time, remove the specimen, allow it to cool to room temperature, and record the weight. Place the specimen in a clean 25 degrees Celsius water bath for 60 to 75 minutes. When performing the six-day evaluation, testing should be initiated within two hours of the end of the six-day soak period. After the specified time period, remove the specimen from the water bath and place in a flat bottom pan. Make sure the hose assembly is attached and in the proper operating position. Clamp the specimen to the pan and mounting plate. Cover the sample with 25 degrees Celsius water to a depth of at least a fourth inch over the surface of the sample. Lock the rubber hose abrasion head on the shaft of the Hobart machine. Elevate the pan and mounting plate assembly so that the abrasion head floats on the sample during the test. Use the prop block if necessary to support the assembly during testing. Set the speed to the lowest setting of the Hobart machine and operate the machine as indicated by the equivalent test duration in the table below. Rotate or replace the hose after each run to obtain an unabraded section for the next test. Once the equivalent of the test duration has been reached, remove the specimen from the pan and wash off the debris. Place the washed test specimen in the 60 degrees Celsius oven and dry to constant weight, which typically is 15 to 24 hours. The dried specimen is removed from the 60 degrees Celsius oven, allowed to reach room temperature, and weighed within 2 hours. 
The difference between this weight and the weight obtained after the first drying is the grams of abrasion loss. Calculate the abrasion loss per unit area by multiplying the grams abrasion loss by the appropriate correction factor in Table 2. Let's look at an example. A sample weighed 733.2 grams after the initial drying. The sample was soaked, tested, and weighed after the second drying and weighed 726.5 grams. We will need to find the amount of mass loss due to abrasion by 733.3 minus 726.5 equals 6.8 grams is the amount of mass loss by abrasion. 6.8 grams is then multiplied by the appropriate correction factor in Table 2 of TB100. In our example, we use a Hobart M50 machine. The factor for the N50 is 2.71. 2.71 times 6.8 equals 18.46 grams per feet squared. The abrasion loss per unit area is 18.46 grams per square foot. For more details on the TB100, please visit slurry.org.